This week on List Rate Rank. You want to let your customers be in on the joke, not, not make them the butt of the joke. On List Rate Rank, our hosts research various topics and each bring their own top five list to the show. Together they debate, discuss, and deliberate, and with the help of an expert, one definitive and indisputable top five list is created. Challenge? Is it a challenge? It's a challenge. This is List Rate Rank. Welcome to List Rate Rank. I'm David Fedor. And I'm Felicia Gillespie. And today we are talking, Felicia, about marketing missteps. We're talking about advertising aberrations, PR problems. Sorry, I looked up alliteration uh, before the show (laughs) and was going for some fun things. We're talking about branding mistakes that companies make when they try to advertise their product and it just flops. Yeah, I wasn't sure about this episode. You know, I wasn't sure exactly what you were looking for, what we were doing. So I just came up with specific examples. Is that what you did or are you, are you keeping it broad? No, that's what I did too. Uh, okay, I have, great. I have specific cases of companies that are like, hey, check out this awesome commercial or this awesome ad campaign that is the bee's knees. And then it ends up being horribly racist or, you know, <laughs> yeah, just completely insensitive to a whole group of people. So. Yes, that's okay. Same with me. And I, I feel like you're going to, um, you know, just dominate this one because you are kind of, you're a marketing guy, right? Right. Yeah. I've worked in marketing for yeah. a couple of years now. And um, like, to me, it's weird because branding is, um, it's, it's weird. It's, 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 it's all like institutional. It's especially these, these big name companies that own every other company anyway. And it, and it all feels to me like an old way of doing things um like kind of like tv you think of tv you think of the network tv you think of abc nbc cbs the big three networks and then cable came and now you have 100 channels well now you have thousands of channels and streaming networks and all this other stuff i think branding and marketing is kind of that like you used to have you know uh one giant in an industry that was the main thing and then everybody else was kind of just generic but yes. I don't think the world works like that anymore. I think now there's thousands of companies that do the same thing and people have to find what works for them or uh, you know, having niche markets or something like that where uh, you don't see a market share of like 80% of cars are made by Ford or whatever. Like there's thousands of cars. Like what car works for you? It could be as specific as cup holders, who knows? Um, so that's I the, would say that there are actually too many options out there. I mean, if you ever go to the store and you're like, you see like 80 styles of cheese it you ever have that problem <laughs> where you're like, what cheese its do I want? I don't even know. I want all of them. I want five of them, too many cheese its or even shampoo. Uh, maybe this is more of a female problem than a male problem, but I, I, Look, there are too many options. That's what I'm saying. So it's just to make us more like, you know, one of the, those countries that live in a dictatorship. Give me two options. I know what you're talking about. Like ketchup is the same way too. It's like now, like it was either Heinz or Hunt's or like generic ketchup. And now like Heinz ketchup, there's 17 different Heinz ketchups. There's 40 different brands. Um, when I was a kid, and this is going to sound like old man yelling in a cloud or whatever. Uh, but like you had the brand name version and then you had the generic version and like you either had Lay's chips or Ruffles chips, or you had a white plastic bag that said potato chips on it. That was the one that (laughs) my family got, you know, now like store brands are a thing and they're not as generic as generics anymore. So it's like now there's so many different brands that it, it almost doesn't matter. So to me, anyway, so in terms of marketing and branding, authenticity, uh, things that you connect with and you you, uh, communicate with, to me, that's what is good these days. Um, I think the uh, consumer is as educated as ever. So they're not going to believe some of the uh, stuff that, they're not going to believe some of the stuff that was sold to them in the past in terms of uh, magical elixirs and all that bullshit. Um, Right. so, So I think it's more about experience, more about, personal preference and um and an educated consumer yes and for the record i don't really want to live in a dictatorship i would rather <laughs> have you know 50 of cheese it's to choose from than two what is your favorite cheese it we're gonna have to do the, top five the, cheese it's or something right the the regular ass cheese it <laughs> me too 
and sometimes you can't find it because you know you have the thin and the white cheddar and the like i've seen groups. slightly they have slightly toasted now i'm like slightly toasted cheese it's okay did we really need to make a whole new category for slightly <laughs> toasted i bought it i tried it i'm like this is garbage this yeah is garbage. these are the burnt ones that nobody likes to eat <laughs> that's exactly what they did but anyway so let's do what we came here to do and talk about the top five branding mistakes uh would you like me to go first Yes, go first. Okay. Here are my top five. Number five, Dove Soap is racist. Number four, Kendall Jenner and Pepsi don't mix. Number three, Planters Peanuts kills off Mr. Peanut. What the hell are they thinking there? Number two, Casa Sanchez with her tattoo campaign. And number one, New Coke. These, the, that's a pretty good list. I, uh, I've seen some of those and I've got, uh, let's see how many that I got one of those on my list. My uh -oh. list is, uh, number five, got milk campaign, switching over to Spain. Number four, radio shack changing to just the shack. Number three, <laughs> life call. I've fallen and I can't get up. Number two, when the Labor Party launched the Women to Women campaign, I'll get into that. Mm. And then number one was the Kenner, Kendall Jenner Pepsi ad. Ah. Yeah. That was just stupid ass commercial, wasn't it? Oh, it made me angry when I saw that. Didn't it air during a Super Bowl? Am I, am I wrong about that? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, I know there's, I, I remember seeing like shorter versions during my research for this. I found like a three minute version that was, as absurd, if not more. Um, and for those of you who might not know, uh, it's it's this kind of protesty, let's make peace through Pepsi commercial, right? Yes, I believe this was like a, some Black Lives Matter protests were going on. This was in 2017, but you don't see that in the ad. It's very um, not. It's very uh, objective, I guess. They it, just it, keep it very vague. <laughs> The, the signs and everything have uh, generic phrases on it. One says, join the conversation. Um, they either say love or have a heart drawn on it or a, um, a peace sign drawn on it. Right. So, you know, the police in this commercial, in this, uh, in this fake world reality that, that's happening in this commercial, the police are against that. They're against love. They're against people joining the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's when I saw that commercial, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Because my first thing was one of the, one of the Jenners is just inserting themselves into a political movement or statement because they can't go without having attention for right you know, 30 seconds. And to me, that was like so offensive and appalling on its own, despite what, what else the message was in the commercial right. or accidentally was in the commercial. I just hated the fact that there was a Jenner doing something. Look at me, look at me, you know, yeah. it's like, shut up, go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what, what, what other things that I didn't like about that commercial was the fact that one, all the protesters were way too happy and way too beautiful. Like they were all <laughs> gorgeous people walking in the streets, holding signs, and um, it was and it was ridiculous. And then every single person was wearing either blue or white, like this light blue or a white uh, outfit, and it was so ridiculous because obviously those are like Pepsi colors, right? Uh, and the, and the thing that's gonna make us all happy is drinking Pepsi together. Um, <laughs> And then, and then at the end, at the end, she hands, she hands the cop the Pepsi and he takes a sip of the Pepsi and the cop looks at the other cop sitting next to him and he gives him this nod like, hmm, maybe they are so bad. I, I don't remember that part. Yeah. The, I don't. The, if, if you can, we'll put up a link for the two minute 48 second version of this where the cop like looks at the other cop and gives him this nod like, ah. Oh. I just realized. Yeah, that I'm low on sugar. And that's why <laughs> I've been, you know, brutalizing people all this time. I just needed a Pepsi. My God. Well, your number one was a Pepsi commercial. My number one was a Coca-Cola blunder, New Coke. 
So new Coke was introduced in April of 1985 to replace regular Coca-Cola so that it could go on the offensive against Pepsi. So the big cola wars of the eighties, Pepsi and Coke were like the two big things that, you know, for some reason that's what America cared about. Right. And Coca-Cola was like, we're going to change our recipe because Pepsi is sweeter than Coca-Cola. So people prefer a sweeter cola. So they replaced it with new Coke and in blind taste tests and all these other taste tests and things, people loved new Coke better. But when they found out that it was replacing Coca-Cola, this institution of America, everybody hated it. So sales plummeted. Every, like there was so much backlash, people were writing letters and just complaining about how dare you change Coca-Cola's recipe. And within three months, Coca-Cola re-released regular Coca-Cola as Coca-Cola Classic. So I remember when I was a kid drinking Coca-Cola Classic and I remember there being a distinction. And like eventually in the nineties, like it all just went away and like Coke went back to being regular Coke and um, new Coke became Coke two. And then it just disappeared. Um, so when Coca-Cola classic came out, everybody hated new Coke. So Coca-Cola classic was outselling new Coke, but then eventually also started outselling Pepsi. So by accident, they ended up getting Coca-Cola to outsell Pepsi by making their product suck so bad that they had to come back and be like, all right, here's the regular Coke back. Um, so that was, that was really weird. Um, wow, but, but people liked the, the, the taste of the new Coke, right? They, they, they liked loved the, it. The, in blind taste tests, people were like, oh, this one's sweeter. I like this one better. And, and the other thing too, I think, is the regular Coca-Cola had uh, cane sugar as the main sweetener ingredient. And new Coke was the high fructose corn syrup. So the people went nuts for it because it was high fructose corn syrup. You know, it's like, oh, people love, you know, this addictive drug that is horrible for everything. Um, so then whenever they put Coke Classic back out, they were like, here's the original recipe. They used high fructose corn syrup instead of the cane sugar. And they're like, that is not the regular Coca-Cola recipe, you liars. And they're like, well, it's yeah. close enough as it is. We're not using cane sugar anymore. But now you could buy variants of Coca-Cola that are use cane sugar or use the pink stuff or the yellow stuff or the blue stuff. There's so many Cokes, like nobody cares anymore. But in 1985, don't you dare fuck with Coca-Cola, man. Yeah, I, uh, you know, Coke to me is the evil. I, I, I don't drink it. I have a sip every, every once in a while, like twice a year, probably. And as soon yeah. as I have it, I'm like, man, that tastes good. I don't need any more of that. <laughs> um, and I used to drink soda all the time, but uh, Coke tastes amazing in a styrofoam cup with some ice. I don't know if you've ever had it. That something about the styrofoam, it just tastes There's, absolutely delicious. At a movie theater, at a ballpark. Um, for some reason, pop always tastes better out of a fountain because of the mix of the sh syrup and the carbonated water over ice, of course. Um, but yeah, like it's to me, it's a special occasion drink. It used to be like a daily thing. Now I drink it with, you know, um, vodka or rum. That's that's what I use soda for. So they um, technically they, they only lost sales for a little bit when they did this. Right. Because they went back. Yeah, uh, with within six months of Coca Cola Classic coming out, they that became the most selling. So you know, within the year, they were able to rebound. But it was an image thing. Like to this day, people talk about New Coke. Uh, Stranger Things, I think, made a reference to New Coke. Uh, New Coke, and they started reselling New Coke as a gimmick because it was in Stranger Things, uh, because of the nostalgia and things like that. So like, it's one of those blunders that stands the test of time, which is why it was my number one. Wow. Uh, you know, that, that is a good number one. I need your help with this one. I put this as my number three because I'm like, this is horrible. Because, like the life call, I've yeah. fallen and I can't get up. 1989, worldwide phenomenon ma made fun of by everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you think that's a mistake though i think that's a because it brilliant. became a joke it was a joke like if they didn't mean it as a joke everyone else turned it into a joke so essentially you're getting made fun of and not being taken seriously 
So what person, what elderly person or, or person who maybe not even elderly, but who has health problems wants to order this product and they're like, Hey, I got a life call. And it was like, life call. Oh my God, that's weird. Th you know, it, it would be embarrassing, I think. Um, so it's like, I think the fact that it's made fun of makes it a huge marketing mistake. And the problem was because they hired those horrible actors for yeah. commercials. That's what made it horrible. Well, try to find an 80 year old actor who's good, you know, who can deliver a line. <laughs> You know, try to find an 80 year old to uh, convince me that your hip is broken. They can't right, do it. Right. <laughs> like maybe 80 year old Leonardo DiCaprio will method act and break his own hip and then you'll get a compelling life alert sign, uh, life yeah. alert commercial. But until then, you, you, gotta, you gotta take what you can get. I think it was a brilliant marketing strategy and I think it was a great uh, uh, thing and I think it was successful for them. I don't think it was embarrassing <laughs> at all. Well, you can't call it brilliant because I don't think they meant to do that. I don't think it was intentional for them to be like, hey, be really, say this line horribly, you know, just, just, just be terrible in this commercial. And that probably won't make the list since it's like, you know, it was a mistake because I don't think they meant it intentionally, but it, I guess it did end up paying off for them. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. That's like the, the, the where's the beef lady from Wendy's who's like, where's the beef? She's this old lady looking for the where's the beef. And that became kind of a funny thing, but everybody remembers where's the beef. That's not going to make the thing. I'm going to cut that out because that was a- Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut out I'd my say. entire life alert story too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can understand how you're saying it probably doesn't point or paint their company in, in a positive light, but I guarantee you they sold a bunch of those things. They so they sold T-shirts of that slogan. Yeah, they made a fortune, and it's so. a great product, and probably saved a lot of lives of old people. So if you want to say saving lives of old people is bad for the show, just admit it now. <laughs> I want to know about Mr. Peanut. What happened with Mr. Peanut? All right, so Mr. Peanut died, right? So the did he have a peanut allergy? No, that would have been fun though. Um, the, <laughs> here's here's what happened to Mr. Peanut. It was a problem with their timing, which had nothing to do with what they did. It was a marketing mistake and a marketing blunder because of um, the real world affecting their, their thing. So they killed off Mr. Peanut like maybe a month before the Super Bowl. And they were going to run a campaign un until and have this giant funeral on the commercials for the Super Bowl, right? So the, it was going to be the star-studded people and they're all going to be crying and, and really missing Mr. Peanut and this horrible thing. So like a week or two before the Super Bowl, maybe a month before the Super Bowl, they put out the commercial where Mr. Peanut, Wesley Snipes, and the comedian Matt Walsh are driving in a car and the car goes skinning off this uh, cliff and they're all dangling from the tree and they realize that one of them has to let go or they're all going to die. So Mr. Peanut sacrifices himself and falls to his death so Wesley Snipes and Matt Walsh could live. It's absurd, it's funny. It's like, oh, okay, hmm, I wonder where they're going with this. Later that week, Kobe Bryant's helicopter crashed, killing himself, his daughter, and all those people that were on the helicopter. And it was like, fuck. So while Mr. Peanut and planters were planning this whole, let's have the world mourn for a, a month about this Mr. Peanut fictional character, one of the largest, most beloved celebrities in the world and his daughter and other families die in real life. So planters is like, shit, what the hell are we gonna do? We can't have this whole two weeks of mourning while the world is actually mourning a death. I, I, uh, so this happened recently. This happened earlier this year. So, oh my um, God. So they ended up actually still airing the funeral commercial during the Super Bowl, but they downplayed a lot of their, they said that they had other things planned and they downplayed that and they just canceled a lot of stuff. Um, but in the commercial, at the gravesite, a little peanut plant opens up in the grave, and there's a little baby peanut on this peanut plant. 
and he's like, hey, what are, I'm, I'm Baby Nut. And they called him Baby Nut. Um, so they went from Mr. Peanut to Baby Nut, this adorable little peanut. Um, so then people are like, is Baby Nut a new, the new like mascot? And everybody was confused. Also, a lot of people are like, why did you call him Baby Nut? There are a million things you could have called him besides Baby Nut. That just sounds really, really bad. Um, so over the past couple months, they've been aging him up. And right now, I think he's a 21-year-old hipster peanut right now. Because I remember seeing a, a commercial where he's ordering a beer in a bar. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, weren't you just baby nut? And he's like, nah, peanuts age different. I'm 21 now. Give me that damn beer or something like that. And I'm like, what is going on with planners? This is all a shock to me. Uh, I am very surprised I've heard none of this. I have seen none of this. That sounds, uh, that sounds ridiculous. It sounds hilarious. Uh, it definitely sounds very confusing. It's not clear. Uh, yeah. So, oh my God. The, so as of right now, the new mascot is Hipster Nut, who just... Yeah, he, he doesn't give any Fs. He's like, what? <laughs> Buy my peanuts or not? I don't care. <laughs> so um, are people upset? People are just confused. People they're are not confused because they're like, they, they don't know if this is um, a reincarnation of Mr. Peanut or if this is Mr. Peanut's son because it grew from the grave of Mr. Peanut. And um, I mean, it's all ridiculously unnecessary and dumb. Um, <laughs> but, it but it's also like, because of the timing, like it would, be, it would be the thing that everybody was like, oh, remember this stupid thing? Um, it could have been so much stupider, uh, except for that helicopter crash, which takes all the fun out of it. Yeah, bad timing, bad timing. They couldn't go through with whatever they were going to go through with. Uh, so that's an interesting one. I'm going to keep, I'm going to put that one on the back burner to see what else you've got because you've also got this, uh, this, uh, this Dove Soap and this Casa Sanchez <laughs> yeah. that I've seen. But I'm going to tell you about, you know, radio, number four is my Radio Shack one, which is just basically in 2009, they came out with the slogan that was like, our friends just call us the slack or the shack. <laughs> our friends call us the shack. It's like, no, nobody calls you the shack. Nobody. <laughs> uh, and they lost all these sales. Like their, their, their mobile phone sales went up, but everything else went down. And uh, people were just like, that, the shack? That sounds like, you know. <laughs> A place in the woods that's abandoned that some psycho lives in. Why would you want to? Why would you want to change your name to the shack? Yeah, the the, the problem of your name was the radio part. Sure. <laughs> the the main thing that you were known for for selling when you first started, uh, you're gonna eliminate that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but but that was that was a bad call for sure. Yeah. I don't have well, much I, more to say about it. I was gonna it, say. Just a, I, I think other companies try to do something similar like that. Uh, like, wasn't, wasn't Pizza Hut trying to call themselves the Hut for a little bit? Yes, um, and Circuit City also did it. They were like, hey, we're the, just the city. You're like, what? The yeah. city? Yeah, they, they, want, they want to go broader. And, I, and, and here's another one that's doing it currently. Dunkin' Donuts is not Dunkin' Donuts anymore. They're just Dunkin'. Oh, and okay. they, in, in terms of their minds, they think that, okay, people aren't eating donuts because they want to be healthy. So we want to do more than just donuts. We want to do coffee and we want to do other foods. So they're just Duncan. That one could work. But and what I are think you Duncan? Hut... But Duncan is oh. the verb of you know, what you're <laughs> doing to the donut. I don't know, like you could dunk a a, a bagel sandwich <laughs> into your coffee, right? Or a, a croissant into your hot chocolate. I don't know. You could dunk a lot of stuff. Dunk them fries into that ketchup. You know, it works. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> they should hire me. I want to know about the, uh, the, I read a little bit about Casa. Casa Sanchez. 
Yes. So Casa Sanchez is a Mexican restaurant in San Francisco. In 1999, they had a campaign that said, if you get our logo tattooed on your body, you could eat <laughs> at our place free for life. So right away, a ton of people started doing this. They had 40 people like almost immediately get this tattoo on themselves. <laughs> and the the thing is that their their logo is actually really freaking cool. It's this I, yeah, I saw it. It is cool. Wearing a giant sombrero, riding a giant um, rocket ship that's shaped like a big ear of corn, and it's like, <laughs> why would you need a reason to get that tattooed on you? <laughs> Let alone free food for life. It's ridiculous. So they they quickly did the math and found out that if these forty people ordered food every day for every meal for the next however many years, they're going to lose $5.8 million. <laughs> and that was in 1990 money or 1999 money, right? So they ended up having to cap it at 50 and then they limited it to one free meal a day because otherwise yeah. you, and even the people who got the tattoo were like, I wasn't going to come here every meal anyway. Like who, who could eat this, who could eat tacos three times a day for seven days a week? That would be insane. I, <laughs> I'll just get a burrito every now and again. Like the people that they were interviewing were like, Hey man, I'm just, I'm just doing it for the free burrito and beer. Um, but I'm not going to abuse it. Um, and, and another thing that I think about this story is I think it's charming because it takes place in 1999 when tattoos were, not as prevalent as they were today. Like if if somebody's like, oh yeah, um, get a pizza tattoo. Like everybody would be like, all right, whatever, I'll get a pizza tattoo. So yeah, so Casa Sanchez tattoos. That's a good one. I, I like that one. The the logo is amazing. That is awesome that so many people were like, I'm in. And they were like, wait a minute, <laughs> oh, hold oh, on. Yeah, we didn't think this would ever happen. Yeah, uh, I say you throw that one on the list because it's awesome. Um, I'm going to talk about the, uh, my number five is the Got Milk campaign. In 2001, Got Milk started advertising in Spain. Okay. And it translated to, are you lactating? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. so instead of, okay, I see, I see. Yeah, not Got Milk, are you lactating? And, uh, and, you know, the people who buy milk over here, apparently they say over in, like, Latina, it's, it's Latina mothers and grandmothers who are responsible for buying milk in those households. So they were, like, offended, you know? They were like, oh, my God, how dare you say that I ran out of milk for my babies, mm, you know? Okay. And over here, it's just like, hey, are you, you got milk? Uh, you know, we, we advertise to everyone, men, women, children. Uh, so that didn't go over so well in in Spain. So the, um, and the, I think that the the, the words the got milk here is iconic because of that you know campaign or whatever. But did, did yeah. they actually use verbatim some kind of poorly translated version of that? Is that where it came across? And is that how it was presented? Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, yes. Are you lactating? That's insane. <laughs> wow, that is yeah. such a huge oversight. And they, they went with it without, uh, yes, without double checking that. And then real quick, I'm going to throw in my number two real quick. I'm going to go back to back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double up on you okay. sneakily. And I'm going to do, uh, so uh, there's something called the Labour Party over in the UK. And it's a center left political party. And this was in 2015. Really, the candidates didn't appeal to women at all and women were like oh my god they're not saying anything that we like so the labor party was like well we don't want to lose the woman's vote uh we we want to encourage women to vote so they launched a woman to woman women to women campaign and it was to get women uh to, they want to treat women as equals they wanted to listen to their concerns encourage progress in women's lives uh but they had a van and they made it pink <laughs> And and they dressed in pink and everything was pink and they and they were like, Hey, we're all about women and women were like, You gotta be kidding me, right? Like you're you're gonna patronize us like this by 
making everything pink. That kind of goes against everything you're trying to do. And uh, the Labor Party, like, they tried to say, like, oh, there's nothing wrong with what we did. We were just making it pink, you know, who cares? And women were just like, no, thank you. So that was a huge, uh, that was a huge blunder. Yeah. Branding the blunder. Execution. Like, the, the, they had genuine, um, you know, uh, genu- genuine feelings behind it. They wanted to reach out to women, but instead of consulting them or talking with them and saying, how can we do this? They just assumed, let's make it pink and girly. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty out of touch. And uh, I just don't understand how you make a mistake like that. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have one left and it's Dove Soap. And this is another one of those, how did this happen in this century type of stories. Um, okay. Dove Soap twice blundered about race first in 2011 they had this before and after um campaign where they showed like skin of people who use soap and it's all crackly and gross and then after it's nice and smooth skin and they had three women standing in front of these pictures and from the left to the right it was a black woman a latina woman and a white woman so it said before and after above their heads. So a lot of people assumed that they were ranked left to right in before and after. Here's this Dove soap. It'll make, <laughs> oh you, it'll make you clean. And it was like, wow, this is horrible. Um, and they were like, no, no, no. The before and after is the, 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 the skin samples on the wall that they're standing in front of. It, it was just a mistake of how it was laid out or whatever. So that was like, okay, it wasn't a big deal. 2017 comes out, they run a Facebook ad showing a story in four panels, right? So there's four pictures from top left to bottom right. There's a black woman wearing a brown shirt. And then the second picture is her taking the shirt off, pulling it over her head. Third picture, it's over her head. And the fourth picture, it's now a white woman wearing a light colored shirt. So it literally is showing this woman taking off the shirt and becoming clean by using this soap. So it's like, it's, it's so weird and so disturbing. Here, I'll show you this picture of it. Oh, wow. So by going from clean, or by going from dirty to clean is going from yeah. black to white or something. And yeah, like people just- That one definitely seems, it. that one seems- more intentional than the first one you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree as well. Um, and I, I just don't know how, and they were like, oh, well, those were clips from another thing. We had a Latina girl in the middle of it doing that as well. And it was, we were trying to represent all races and cultures, but it was like, again, it's not what you intend on doing, it's what the execution is. And it looks like you're saying, what you were saying yeah. like it it just comes across especially six years after the, the last racial hiccup how does this get approved and and put out there so um, yeah and she doesn't turn white until the shirt is all the way off it's not right. like she's ch- the woman is changing the woman's skin tone is changing as she's taking the shirt off it's the same yeah. woman and i the guess there's I, there's also like a very racist history of um or there's also a history of racism in soap ads uh back in the late 1800s and early 1900s uh they they would have things like uh the, like children talk, like a white child asking a black child why doesn't your mama wash you with fairy soap so so that's why within that industry for a soap to be doing something similar in 2017 like come on so. yeah your list is way better than my list i'm gonna just <laughs> go ahead and give you casa San- sanchez and uh I might as well take the Dove one too. I, the only one, I mean, I'm gonna that got milk one to me is is uh, pretty crazy. Got Radio milk. Shack, Radio Shack rebranding as the Shack, or 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 any company rebranding and and trying to be a generalized version of what they are. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, like I I would gladly accept as many of the ones you want to put of mine in the top ten. Or other, or yeah, other. I'm giving you majority of the points here. <laughs> I'm just going to like wave my, uh, you know, flag of surrender. Um, okay, so I will, uh, Dove Soap, 
we'll do dove soap and um then last we either do got milk killing mr peanut or the shack or women and women actually i do like I, the, i'd like the go ahead i have uh so kendall jenner new coke casa sanchez got milk and dove all right unless you really you want to swap one of those out for the mr peanut one but i think i think that mr peanut one is uh it's more absurd and interesting than it is a blunder. I mean, it's, yes, it's failing. It's but confusing. It's, it's almost at no fault of their own because of the whole Kobe Bryant thing. And the yeah. less we talk about Kobe Bryant, I think the more fun our podcast will be. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, okay. I'm fine for moving on from that topic and going with the lactating Frenchman? Lactating? Um, uh, uh, Latina, Latinas, yeah. All right, so those are the five that we'll be taking to our expert after the break, so stick around. Hey, everybody, this is Jeff, the host of Stuff I Never Knew, trivia game show podcast. Each week, three players from around the world call in and battle it out over three rounds of trivia. Each week, there's a new show. You'll meet new people from around the world. We have over 80 episodes. We're in season four. That's the Stuff I Never Knew trivia game show podcast available everywhere you listen to podcasts. That's StuffIneverKnew.com. StuffIneverKnew.com. That's StuffIneverKnew.com. All right, welcome back. Laura Reese helps smart, fun entrepreneurs and business owners build brands that sell so that they could stop spending so much time hunting for customers and build a system that brings customers to them. She supported some of the world's most recognizable brands, some of the world's smallest companies, and lots of organizations in between. And today, she's our guest expert in branding mistakes. Laura, welcome to List Rate Rank. Hi, how are you? I'm glad to be here. Oh, thank you for joining us. We're excited. Uh, we just had some fun making fun of some blunders of marketing campaigns over the years. There's some good ones out there, isn't there? <laughs> uh, but before we get into that, uh, tell me a little bit about what you do, Laura. Absolutely. Well, my clients um, are people that want to be more known in their fields and they've gotten to a point in their businesses where they're ready to move beyond just kind of one-to-one -one selling. Um, they want to start doing some more marketing uh, to start bolstering those sales efforts. And so they know that they need to start marketing to start driving leads. But the problem is that they don't really know where to start. And so they just start kind of showing up. You know, maybe they'll post some stuff on LinkedIn or they'll post some stuff on Instagram. And they do that without having a real strategy, without really knowing where they're going or what they should say. And then they start getting frustrated because it's a lot of work to start showing up like that. And it doesn't seem to be getting them any return. So I help them uh, through a process that starts with getting really clear about what they offer and why their customers should want it. And I show them how to express that and then how to use all of that information to create and execute a marketing plan that is going to help them move people down the sales funnel in a really intentional way. So uh, you mentioned that you worked with some larger companies and smaller companies. Do you find it that the, there's a big difference between strategies for larger well-known companies and smaller companies that are just starting out? You know, that's a great question. The strategies are basically exactly the same. The difference is the resources that people have to put against those. So that's where I notice a big gap. You know, I could do some branding work for a big, you know, national firm. And then they had the resources to then say, okay, thanks for this brand. And then they could execute it because they have marketers and creatives on staff. Or they could come to me and say, here's our brand. Could you, you know, write a website or, you know, some social media posts? And they had all that stuff kind of in their toolkit already. A small business, you know, you could give them a brand and maybe then they're out of money and they don't know what to do with it. You know, they can't afford to keep paying um, an agency to keep producing things or they come at it from the other way. You know, they'll say, well, I need a website and they don't really know what the website should say or how it should look. And so they end up just really looking like everybody else and saying what everyone else is saying and talking about themselves too much when they should be talking about how they can help customers. Now, how often do you recommend somebody try desperately to go viral? 
by like jumping off of a bridge or doing something crazy and filming it? Oh, well, you know, I mean, it depends on how on brand um, <laughs> jumping off a bridge would be. <laughs> I, I definitely think that doing things that are unexpected is a really great strategy. A lot of people are doing that now though. So being really unique and also being really true to who your brand is and what you offer. I mean, I think that's also the big thing is if I, if I went and jumped off a bridge, I might get some publicity for that, but no one's going to be like, awesome. I'm going to call that lady for branding now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there's no connection there. So you have to make sure that what you're doing can align back to your services and how you help customers. I wish there was a formula for going viral <laughs> because I would be a I know, right? <laughs> a, a, podcast, a podcast could sure use that help. That's right. <laughs> I could raise my fees a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, last question before we get to our lists. Um, one of the things that we were uh, discussing at the top of the show was um, the way that marketing, advertising, branding has changed over the years. So how have you seen the market changing in terms of instead of uh, just giant messages compared to little niche markets and little niche companies? Yeah, I think, you know, certainly there's still the Nikes of the world that can do huge, big stuff and still get a lot of attention for that. But there is a lot um, more accessible ways for a brand to go to market now and to market their services, which is good because it makes it easier for people to do that, but it's bad because now everyone's doing that. And I would say that um, it used to be, you know, when you would think about branding and you could have one big message and that didn't necessarily have to ladder down to a call to action. You know, now it's different. You want people to take action because you get so many more messages now as a consumer. It used to be, you know, when I was a kid, I don't know how old you are, but you know, we watched TV at night <laughs> and that was your, that was the only commercials that you saw. That's where you heard all your advertising. Yeah. You couldn't well, now, fast forward through commercials. You didn't right, have remote control right, to get you up. Had to you had to actually all. go up and turn the <laughs> dial and there were only four channels. Yeah, you had such a captive audience as yeah. an advertiser then. But now, of course, you don't have that. So you want to, instead of just focusing on brand awareness, you really need to be more intentional about saying, okay, once someone knows about me, here's the next step I need them to take. So that's the big difference is for you know companies, especially smaller companies, being really intentional about you know, where they're going to show up and what the steps in, you know, their sales funnel should be to get someone to become a customer. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So let's move ahead with what we came here to do and that's rank stuff. So Felicia and I organized our two separate lists of five into one master list of five. Now, Felicia, please tell Laura what our five are. Okay, please rank these five to one. So we have the Kendall Jenner Pepsi ad. You remember that one? Okay. We have New Coke. What year was that, David? Like in the 80s? That was April 1985, specifically. Okay, in 85 when New Coke came out with a different recipe. And uh, we have a Got Milk ad campaign, which translated to Are You Lactating when it went over to Spain. Uh, <laughs> we have... Casa Sanchez, which was a restaurant that said that if you get a tattoo of their logo, you could eat for free. And Dove's campaign, a couple of Dove campaigns that came off as very racist. All right. So those are our five. Okay. I'm going to go with um, Casa Sanchez as a number five, just because I, you know, I'm not opposed to somebody tattooing my logo on their arm <laughs> if they're really going to do that. That's not well, too bad. <laughs> unfortunately, but unfortunately for them, a lot of people felt the same way and they were potentially on the hook for $5.8 million. Um, yeah. And luckily, luckily it was 1999 when this happened. So people would do that just to get a free meal. And so then they had so many people doing that, that, that it cost them that it, much in free meals. Yeah, it was free meals for life originally. Oh, for life. That's what they said originally. And this was 1999, so people weren't as tattoo happy then. Uh, but 
it, it a lot of people did it and they almost went out of business so that's great okay well i mean i'm still gonna go ahead and put that at number five well gosh i don't know i, I might have to <laughs> let me rethink let me rethink uh, that's all right i didn't realize we we're gonna we we're gonna pay million do millions of dollars on that okay i'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Got Milk being Are You Lactating as number five. I'm gonna to move to um, Costa Sanchez as number four. Then. I think in the history of Lister 8 rank, this is the first time that anybody has successfully argued to get the position switched against an expert. This is great, this is history. <laughs> and I will go with Dub being racist as number three. Um, Kendall Jenner as number two, and number one, New Coke. Yeah. Those are good ones. I mean, New Coke is almost the standard bearer of bad decisions. New Coke is, is the most amazing case study that's <laughs> ever been, <laughs> and, <laughs> as and, far as branding, I guess. And, and what fascinates me about it is that it ended up reversing on itself and becoming successful in promoting Coca-Cola Classic. Yeah, so what do you think about all the conspiracy theories around that? That they did it on purpose to elevate the, the uh, you know, to elevate Coke to be in the public eye more. Mm -hmm. Because they were losing a lot of market share to Pepsi and, and you had some other players coming into the market. So do you think it was a big publicity stunt? Now, they deny that it was. But. I don't think. I think that would, too many stars would have aligned for it to work as perfectly as it did. Um, I think they were definitely fortunate in, in, uh, in the way it happened. Yeah, it would have been a, would have been a pretty big risk, right? <laughs> yeah. But it is, um, it, is, it is the fun thing. And now, um, if I'm remembering correctly, they just re they brought it back with Stranger Things and they were able to sell new Coke as this new retro type, hey, remember, and feeding off the nostalgia. So that's a good way of recovering from a marketing blunder as well. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, that was our five. And Felicia, I hate to say it, um, but you were slaughtered. I got 10 points, you got five points. Oh, I figured. I figured. Well, um, tell us what you brought as your top five, Laura, since um, you I had a few. Out. I had a few of the same ones as you guys. So, nice. but my first two, my first a couple are different. So the first one I have is in 2010, without any warning, Gap unveils a new logo. I don't know if you guys mm. remember this. Yeah. Suddenly, yes. they had... Um, you can probably picture in your mind, it's a, it's a navy blue box with all caps, G-A-P. And they'd had that since the mid 80s. And they suddenly <laughs> changed it to something that looked really generic, it had a capital G and the lowercase AP, and this weird blue box with like a gradient in it on the upper right hand side. Um, they weren't able to really give anyone any good reasoning why they did it. Everyone hated it. The internet, you know, exploded with hatred for the Gap logo. And so within a week, they ended up changing it back without ever really giving that much, <laughs> um, <laughs> without ever giving any good reasons for why they changed it in the first place. So I think that the big lesson that you can take away from that is I really think hard before changing a logo. I would recommend to my clients that if you've had a logo for a long time, um, don't change it just because you're tired of looking at it. Don't change it because you think it's ugly. You first have to ask your customers if they are in love with it or not, because a lot of people love ugly, dumb stuff. And <laughs> they will get really upset if you change your logo. So I always recommend to people to, if you have any equity in it at all, if, if it's hard to execute, maybe evolve it, but I wouldn't just up and change the logo for no good reason. Awesome. My number four is Radio Shack. So in 2009, they were not doing great and um, they tried to rebrand themselves as The Shack. And it, you know, didn't go over very well. It felt really not authentic to who they were. Um, I think the big lesson that we can take away from this is you, 
your brand, you should definitely brand with your customer in mind, which I don't think that they did do because they had this original kind of customer base of people that were kind of geeky and into radio parts. And so trying to be younger and cooler is like the shack that didn't resonate with those um, audience members. And then on the other side, you don't want to be someone that you are not. So I don't think that Radio Shack was cool and hip. So them just trying to pretend like they were fell pretty flat for them. So they ended up changing back and they declared bankruptcy in 2015 anyway. Um, but you know, you can't outbrand a failing business. You can't outbrand a bad product. That's not going to help. You need to fix the inside first <laughs> and then um, let the outside catch up. Awesome. Felicia, what do you think about that one? That one was on uh, my list, but it didn't make it to our uh, to our combined top five. But yeah, that one, I, I agree with you. It was just a weird, like, who wants to call it the shack? Like, like Dave and I talked about. It sounds like a creepy old place, abandoned <laughs> place in the woods, you know? Right, that's a good point that I didn't even bring up. Like, who wants to go to a shack? <laughs> the place is <laughs> yeah. falling down and there's spiders in there. No. <laughs> All right, well, and how about your number three? Okay, my number three is Chase Bank. They did um, a hashtag Motivation Monday post. And this was just last year, so in April of 2019. And I don't know if you guys saw this, but this was a tweet, and I'll read it to you. Um, it says, you, why is my balance so low? Bank account, make coffee at home, bank account. Eat the food that's already in the fridge. Bank account. You don't need a cab. It's only three blocks. You. I guess we'll never know. Bank account. Seriously? And then they hashtagged it Motivation Monday. <laughs> so, <Oof>. of course, <laughs> this, you know, got a lot of crit criticism just because um, executive salaries of people that work at Chase Bank versus the tellers you know, the political climate's really right for people to comment on how difficult it is to earn a living wage. So they really opened a can of worms here. They even, this is a perfect setup for Elizabeth Warren who chimed in and she tweeted back, you know, why aren't customers saving money? Taxpayers, we lost our jobs, homes and savings, but gave you a $25 billion bailout. And she had some more to say about it. But <laughs> So it was a, a lot um, for them, to, a lot of criticism for them to get. Um, I think, you know, you want to, the overall lesson that we can learn from Chase here is you want to let your customers be in on the joke, not, not make them the butt of the joke. So when you're using humor, you have to do it really carefully. You want to bring your customers along and not insult them. My number two is um, Echoes Yours, which is um, Pepsi and Kendall Jenner. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, we talked about this already a little bit, but just the, the um, idea that you can cure things with Pepsi, of course, going in a really wrong direction. And I'm sure you saw so many tweets where people were like, oh, I wish I would have known that to just give someone a Pepsi, I, I, you know, I wouldn't have got arrested, I wouldn't have gotten discriminated against, all this stuff. And there was even that tweet from um, the daughter of Martin Luther King Jr., if only daddy would have known about the power of hashtag Pepsi, which I thought was pretty, pretty big burn for Pepsi. <laughs> um, so here I would advise people, what we can learn from this is to be very, very careful about using current events to sell your product. So you, you should definitely make a statement about current events if it's something that your company feels passionate about, you know, taking action, giving a donation, letting people off work to go, uh, to go protest, whatever those actions are that you can take, it's awesome. But you shouldn't propose that your product is the solution to a problem unless it actually is the solution to a problem. Well, uh, as we found out, a lot of people were saying, I didn't try it. So it might be. So let's give this one some time. <laughs> Never know, right? So my final one is, of course, new Coke. You can't have a, <laughs> you can't have a list like this without having new Coke. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you guys talked about this a lot. They, within three months, they introduced uh, Coke Classic. But you know what I didn't know as I was looking into this further? I mean, I remember this happening. So it was something that came to my mind right away without even, you know, looking anything up. But what I didn't realize when I was researching this a little bit was that they, um, there was still classic Coke packaging as late as 2009. Like, I thought that they, they stopped, they dropped the classic from it a long time before that, but. Yeah, to me, it, I always assumed that a classic Coke, because uh, I remember that as well, but it was always, I don't know why, I always thought it was either caffeine free or it was, it was old. Like, it was early on for me, I knew that Coke classic was old. Mm -hmm. but I didn't necessarily know that new Coke was bad or new Coke was anything different. And, um, and yeah, when I was looking into it too, finding out the difference between the cane sugar and the high fructose corn syrup with the differences of that was interesting to me. Uh -huh. um, and, and again, having the new, the, the, the classic then outselling both regular Pepsi and uh, Coke after that too, is, is just a brilliant stroke of luck. So. Right. What a, what a great, um, consequence of that now do you remember when it happened when they introduced new co i remember there being co classic and i remember yeah. there being a, a stink about it but i don't remember you know why yeah felicia do you remember it no i don't but i do i have this really distinct memory of uh, we had a family friend who i guess he was really really a coke loyalist and i just remember him sitting at our at our um kitchen table one night and after it happened and I remember him just being like, well, they've lost one of their customers changing their goddamn formula. <laughs> he was so mad wow. about it and just screaming these curse words. I mean, and I was really little then, right? So it was probably inappropriate to be screaming like that in front of me. <laughs> I'll always remember that about New Coke. Well, th that's <laughs> one of those things that people, you know, accepted that brand as like Americana that was untouchable. That was an institution. So Absolutely. that's, I guess, one of those things that, you know, if, you, if you're going to change something like that, like now there are like 20 different flavors of Coke and there's Coke with cane sugar and there's Coke with different uh, fake sugars and different flavors. So they were just ahead of their time, I guess. Yeah. Or they should just came out with, yeah, called a Coke two instead of new Coke. They did call it Coke two for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. Funny? They tried, they tried to keep doing it. Uh, there's so much there. No, I think that you've hit on exactly the lesson. At that time, I, I'm not sure that there was anyone in the world that had more brand equity than Coca-Cola brand. So when you have, I mean, any brand equity that you have, you don't want to mess with, but especially when you're the number one brand, most recognized brand in the world, like don't change your flagship product. Yeah. That seems like a lesson we wouldn't have to tell someone, but... Well, I do have a couple follow-up questions then, and I'll ask you both, Felicia and Laura. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Yeah, Coke for me too. Nice. Also, me as well. That's three three votes for Coca-Cola. I'm not a fan of the bitter. The Pepsi is a little too sharp for me. It's a little too bitey. I find it kind of sweet, too sweet. That's New Coke was sweeter than both of them. Isn't that funny? And Wait. do you remember the Pepsi challenge, right? Like people were choosing Pepsi over yeah. Coke. And I think that was part of their impetus, they say, to change the formula, but. Yeah, interesting. Okay, Felicia, Laura, would you get a tattoo for free food for life from uh, any restaurant? I have to think about what restaurant I might want to do that from. Yeah, me too. I mean, a tattoo, I, cause I have no other tattoo, so it would be my first and only tattoo. Um, Same. So that's a big, that's a big commitment. I mean, yeah, I now don't think I would do it. Free food for life. So Casa Ranch, uh, Casa, da, 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 Casa Sanchez had to cap it at one a day and 50 people. Now I'm saying yeah. Yeah. there is no cap. You could eat there three times, three times a day. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's a, uh, a restaurant of your choosing. Uh, right. Now, I would do the thing that I've seen where if you get a tattoo of a band, they let you into any show for free. I would do that. But that's because, like, the restaurant thing, I'm like, oh, man, I get fat really easily. So, <laughs> you know, if it, if it was a restaurant that was, like, just tacos all the time, so, so many carbs, and 
I, I, I just wouldn't. I would be eating there all the time. Right. And I would get, I would get so big. And uh, yeah, so it would have to be like some kind of health restaurant or something, or like, I don't know, the the hot bar at Whole Foods, if that was an option. <laughs> You could get a Whole Foods tattoo, and then could you get free anyway. groceries? I got, I can do that. I could do that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even Kroger, I would go with Kroger because we go there all the time. Oh wow, that was fun! All right, so Laura, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, how people could find out about your business and what you offer, your website and social media pages, things like that? Absolutely. So you can um, find me at L R E E S as in sam.com that's my website and i um run 21 day challenges every um about every month that walks you through a jumpstart version of this my brand to sell process so if anyone's interested they can always go to lreese.com forward slash challenge and it's a free 21 day challenge just to give you a jump start on your brand to marketing execution hey, Felicia, um, we're, gonna do that. we're gonna do that Awesome. So I would also um, love to see you on Instagram where my Instagram name is underscore Laura Reese. So underscore L-A-U-R-A-R-E-E-S as in Sam. And I will catch you in either of those two places. That's awesome. Yeah, we're definitely going to check out that 21 day challenge because we need some marketing help here at Listray Rank. We're, we're, oh, cool. we're picking this thing up and relaunching it now. So a lot of our listeners are going to, you know, need to come from somewhere. So what final tip, final tip for podcasting, what should list rate rank do besides your 21 day challenge to, uh, do you guest on other podcasts? We have not yet. Well, other people's audiences are a really good attraction strategy pretty low entry like it's free you know it just will cost a lot of time researching um, other podcasts and pitching them because you'll have to of course you know like know what their podcast is about but you you know really well what you're looking for in a podcast guest so i think you guys would be really good guests on other podcasts and drive some traffic from other people's audiences Awesome. Well, thank you. We're definitely going to check that out. And like I said, we're going to check out that 21 day thing. You had me at free. Fantastic. Good. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, I'm definitely a person who needs branding and marketing advice. Uh, so I'm definitely going to do the 20 the free 21 day awesome. challenge. Is it a challenge? It's a challenge. All right. Yeah, like I'm a in. Quick and dirty version of getting something out there and then tweaking from nice. there. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Laura. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. It was great chatting with you guys. Thank right. you. Thanks, Laura. Bye, guys. Please rate and subscribe to List Rate Rank on Apple, Google, Spotify, or YouTube, and find our bonus content on ListRateRank.com. Follow at List Rate Rank on Twitter and Instagram, like List Rate Rank on Facebook, and join our Facebook group to get in on the fun. Thank you for listening to List Rate Rank. Hi, Felicia. How are you? Nice to have you. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. She she listened to our other episodes and she was like, I still came on the show anyway. <laughs> I was like, I never really do this. <laughs>